Hey guys, welcome back. It's Carter BBT. I want to bring a quick few tips to you guys. I did one last night on Twitter, but I'm going to go ahead and put together a few here for you as we're going through and updating the farm and running into various issues with a handful of rigs. I can walk you guys through some quick tips if you're trying to troubleshoot your current rig at home, if it's giving you issues and what to do. So one of the very first things that we like to do when we first set up a new board, and we'll show this here, is unlike this particular board, this ASUS board or any other non-mining specific board if they have any led lighting like this particular board has led lights that go right between these two little uh connectors here we turn off that there's a there's a setting in here called breathing we disable that when we're going through the board the very first time so we know when we go through the farm that if we're having an issue with a rig one of the very first indicators is actually the lighting the rgb lighting on some of the other boards if you disable that and then you're walking by your rig and you notice hey the rig rebooted and that's on that's probably an indicator that your bios had got reset and that's probably the main leading indicator that there's something wrong with your rig with regards to like the 4g decoding the certain settings for the PCIe links, the things that actually make multi-card rigs really function on the newer boards. You get that visual indicator because the lights are back on. One of the troubleshooting pieces that you'll do is you'll pull your different risers, uh, you know, pull all your risers, get into your BIOS here, and then you could go in and change. Now, each BIOS is a little different with each different motherboard maker. However, you can go back in there and turn those, those advanced settings off. We ensure the 4G decoding on every board that you have. You need that 4G decoding. If you're looking for in any motherboard that you use you're looking for your dmi max speed links you always want to set that to either gen 1 or gen 2 most of our boards we do gen 2 if you're still having an issue with like an eight card rig you can go down to gen 1 now those are usually in different areas on a motherboard on this asus board they're essentially under the sa configuration port management and you can see we set that to gen 2 in here so you want to make sure that those are set your generation so that's your pcie lane and that's the speed that it's running out and there's a lot of shared resources on a motherboard so there's the cpu and then there's shared resources on your pcie lanes so if you add a lot of gpus you're going to run out of your pcie lanes if you're running a higher generation because there's a lot more requirements that the motherboard needs when you're running that so you want to run those at about one act you need the 4g decoding and that will get you to where you have you know six eight cards on a motherboard in addition to what i was just saying as you see like our nodes here we have eight risers out here we always have a seven card rig and we always add an additional riser that's setting off to the side over here this particular riser is purely for the quick testing so if you have a mining rig and you have an extra riser if you're building a seven card rig or an eight card rig it's nice to get like that 10 pack use those couple of extra risers have them off to the side keep them with the rig it's all about the timing and how fast you can get your rig back up if you're you don't have to go looking around for your riser it's already there we include it on here for we can quickly test cards other issues that can happen now i pulled a couple of these and you can't really see the the texture or the issues with these but the sata to the six pins on a lot of the newer risers you can get an issue where if a riser might be fine so the riser itself this guy right here is actually fine but your sata connector here that's connected to a single sata adapter here this piece right here like this one is very very stiff you can feel the ends where it's gotten really really stiff where if i grab another one i can bend it and everything this is like literally hardened and you can feel right at the end that it's hitting a point to where this this piece is what's went out so sometimes it's not necessarily the riser itself it's actually that that component this component so in our case here we've only lost a couple uh, i would call it a best practice if you have an extra riser just to replace the whole thing but just letting you know that this could be your culprit now let's talk gpus if you've had a gpu running for quite a long time now for our particular case a little almost over three years now now these things have been running almost like two and a half to three years and pretty much continuously and what happens especially in a like a high cfm environment where there's a lot of airflow going through the actual paste will dry dry and crust out and it loses thermal effectiveness so then we have a spike in temperatures the card gets unstable so what we've done here and just to let you know so far we've done probably about 600 gpus like this so far we've recovered 100 we have one that's that's going through the ultrasonic cleaning because we're having some artifacting with it and it, no matter what memory setting it's running it's running in some issues so so we're probably going to end up baking it but we have cleaned up these all these gpus so we 
pull them apart like this and then we're replacing the thermal pads where they need to be replaced where they're not sticky anymore and have an issue we're completely cleaning the paste off cleaning the paste off of the the actual card itself now we're using some expensive um thermal grizzly so we got a couple of these tubes these things are about 100 100 bucks but this will do a lot of gpu um, we're, we're actually trying to measure how many gpus so i would say this is going to get us through a couple hundred gpus because we don't have to put a ton of it on there and you can see some of the paste there um so we're using the thermal grizzly to make sure that it's it's going to get us some distance here but again recleaning repasting getting your 3m strips and redoing your memory pieces and then making sure your vrms which are over here are have proper coverage and heat transfer will get you a long way your temperatures will come down the cards become a lot more stable so again if you've had gpus you have your gtx 1060s 1070s you have some old rx series cards repasting them and even some of the newer cards that have kind of crappy paste repasting them is worth it especially since we're running the cards a lot harder than just a typical gamer because we're doing a long for a very long time so if you have a kind of a flaky gpu there's a high chance you need to replace that now there was some question about just doing really quick care and maintenance on the rigs and you know what do we do like in the farm or do we always have to pull the gpus now no we will go through we'll shut down sometimes shelves and we'll do a quick dust off with the stuff um we do have air with extension tubes or with the tubing here to where we can roll through compressor setup here to where we've pexed it over over there and i'll show you guys that here in a second and then we're actually drying the air that's coming through here so like we can turn off this valve and you can see because we've been using it quite a bit so if i come through here and open this up you'll see water will pour out of this we just pretty dry we just did this but uh you know I'll, I'll link this in the description but you have in something like this that show that will will capture the water that way you're not spraying any kind of mist over on your cards and especially on your power supplies and i always recommend do this when the cards when this stuff's off don't ever try to blow um your rig when it's running uh, it's just bad for everything you know we got the compressor over here that's actually feeding our air tube lines and we'll come over here so we got a couple so it comes down over here so we actually have two of these and between these two rollers we have enough tubing to get to all the different rigs now, of course, there's a ton more to cover when it comes to like troubleshooting a rig, but I wanted to give you guys a quick few points of some of the stuff we've just ran into while we're going through our normal yearly maintenance here and cleaning the cards and the rigs and trying to find out why we have some that are down and bring those points to you guys. So hopefully this was a real quick and good one for you. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. So it's at Bitsby Trippin on Twitter. You're gonna see some of those videos and it kind of gives you guys a preview of what's coming this way onto YouTube also. So Twitter, and then when I get back from the farm, we're gonna be doing live streaming on Twitch and I'll do an ask me anything with you guys there. So bring your questions there. If you wanna to talk to me live on Twitch, that'll be this weekend that we'll do that. Yeah, we got a lot more work here to do. Let's get into this.